What's up everybody? Peepo again. And it is Trad Method Monday. Of course, it's going to be posted Tuesday simply because technical difficulties, I guess you could say, is my best response for that. But so, today's Trad Method Monday is going to be about more or less a talk. It's not going to really be a tutorial of any sort. It's just going to be a talk about a concept. Uh, which is what TMM is pretty much supposed to be, is concepts and methods. But today's one is actually going to be about your saddles. And I'll probably do a, tuto a video tutorial for saddles, but I have posted actual um, picture uh, tutorials on Instagram. If you go back sometime last year so not too far back I try to mediate my pictures pretty well to where it's stuff purely for you guys to either look at or be educated from but today's video is saddles and this is my burn X that I got dyed by uh, rocket pocket with an authentic rocket pocket in the head and there's a couple different ways to talk about a saddle. A saddle is more or less a storage of strings at the bottom that's really just a way of looking cool while actually storing spare string at the bottom of the head. And if you actually think about it, the saddle name comes from obviously the stirrups and everything like that that goes with your uh, riding of a horse. and if you kind of look at them and compare the two, they do look somewhat similar if you're really going to the broad spectrum of what it's supposed to look like. And it really does end up being a saddle. Um, not too much in the way of history right there, but that's more or less how I was explained uh, when I was first learning. But so... Your saddles can be done many, many different ways. There's so many different ways. Uh, the bottom transition knots in a uh, classic trad like this one, that's essentially a version of a saddle. It's just called a transition knot. And there's asymmetrical, there's symmetrical ones. I wish I had a symmetrical one tied up to really show you guys what it looks like but if you've ever seen a pita pocket or a trad x or um, an o channel pocket or if you've even seen grunk pockets anything that's a symmetrical pocket is usually going to have what is considered a saddle and it's again a way of storing string a way of uh, kind of mixing the colors together to make it look cool it's to it's just another way of weaving a string and the thing is that a saddle is this really all it is is you take the idea of these interlocks and all you do is you make them extremely close together if you've ever seen a pocket called the cobra and honestly I've only ever strung one and it was a waste of time and a waste of material. It's really cool looking, but it is so tedious to string that I would have to charge far more money than I would really want to in order to make it efficient to match the labor that goes into that head, into that pocket. But so, uh, if you actually look at how a cobra is done, it is essentially that just at the bottom of the pocket and it's actually rather simple it a lot of people think it's really hard and stuff but it's it's really not super difficult and the asymmetrical ones like the one that's in the rocket pocket it's a little bit more unique a little bit more elaborate if you've never done one um, your pita pockets and trad x style ones are essentially what you do with the with the interlocks that come down so imagine that this is a symmetrical pocket as they're coming down they are all interlocking together 
from these outer areas to the inner area or outer tracks to the inner tracks when you actually get down to where you want to make your saddle all it is is you're bunching up those strings instead of having them spaced out like this you're getting them extremely condensed in about a one inch span I usually don't do more than five or six interlocks for a saddle and that usually comes out okay if you do much more than that it really just kinda hardens up the bottom of the pocket and then what some people mistakenly do with mesh pockets is they make uh, a, a mid high high pocket and then they get down to their bottom string and they don't really know that some of the more intricate ways to do it to where instead of actually having a nice flowing bottom to the channel or at least a bottom to the finish of it it's just like a clef it's like it essentially looks like this at, at the bottom of the pocket and you don't want that you want a nice flowing bottom to the pocket even if it's shifted high you want it to look like that and some people just don't don't realize that that is actually not good for the pocket to make it all that space all this space right here to just be flat and hard is not a good thing so if you're making a saddle make sure it's nice and you can have it be tight but if you're gonna have a saddle make it loose to the to the sense that it's also gonna break in if you're stringing it to where it's not gonna break in like the rest of the pocket then you might as well not do it uh, it needs to be able to stretch a little bit and needs to be able to do what the rest of the pocket is going to be doing while you're using it but so you don't want it going super high or anything like that so if you're one of those guys that likes to string flat and then push the pocket out and then just knot off up here make one more interlock make one more interlock down and then do your saddle down here instead of up here because all you're doing is hurting the pocket by having the leathers come together super close while the rest of it is up up near the middle and the top of the pocket being farther apart all you're doing is causing unneeded stress and so on and so forth on the leathers and on the string and then the pocket can essentially evolve with you so that's really all that it is is all you're doing is condensing the interlocks in order to create the saddle and you can do that with asymmetrical you can do that with symmetrical I've seen a few people do where they condensed a great number of interlocks at the bottom of an asymmetrical and then did a transition knot just to kinda of make it look cool and it does look cool and I can't even pronounce it the Fibonacci pita or whatever the heck it's called essentially just a bunch of dead weight but um, the same that's really the same idea it's just over a much bigger area is you're doing a, the Fibonacci or whatever the heck it's called up at the top at the bottom instead and that's really what a saddle is so you can do that on an asymmetrical you can do it on an asymmetrical pocket similar to like the rocket pocket and then for your symmetrical pockets you can do it to where it's a little bit better looking than this but essentially it's gonna look like that it's gonna look very similar to that and it's just a very clean neat way to finish off the bottom of the pocket or do your transition so on and so forth and then you're also able to store a decent amount of string at the bottom because of that so if something goes wrong you can feed string up into the pocket and get rid of most of the saddle so that you have more string to use so just just a fun little concept that some people kind of overlook and whatnot I'll more than likely do a quick tutorial of the sort just so you guys know what I'm talking about but that's really it that's really all this video is about is talking about the idea behind a saddle for your for your pockets so thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed hope you got a little bit of uh, information about what this it what this item is and what it's used for 
as far as the pocket that you're trying to string up or you're at least trying to use so thanks for watching like comment subscribe uh, i have a few other little things that i have planned for youtube as well as a possible podcast i don't know if that's really something that i'm going to be able to do or not but if i can i would like to and i'll let you guys know about that as as things progress but thanks for watching guys i'll catch you later